Okay, you made it through the soul, part one. So you've really done the hard part. Congratulations on that. Um, so pat yourself on the back, go get um, a refreshment, and we'll get on to part two, which is the top of the foot or the instep of the felted clog slipper. So this is really the easier part. It goes pretty quickly. Um, and then we'll carry on with the contrasting cuff if you're going to do that. And if you're not going to change colors, you'll just go forward. And I'll explain all that when we get there. All right. Fantastic. Now we've finished. We've actually finished knitting the sole. So you can see if this was um, folded together, it kind of makes a big oval shape. You can see that in the camera. And now what we want to do is add our contrasting color for the top of the foot if you're in fact doing that. If you're not, um, just follow the instructions and carry on if you're not going to add a second color. If you are, it'll end up looking something like this. So you're going to have your sole and then your contrasting top of the foot color. Okay. I don't do anything fancy to add. Um, all I do is is take my contrasting color and, and seriously, I just tie a little overhand knot right here. It's going to be all felted together and you won't be able to see that once everything is washed and felted. So I just tie it on like that and then I just take my finger and kind of slide it up to the top at the base of your last knit stitch. Then what I'm going to do is just kind of hang on to everything here with my left fingers and I'm just going to um, look at the directions and it says knit one row and mark as right side. So I'm just going to knit one row. I'm going to at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut the darker gray yarn that is my foundation, okay? And I cut it away, so I'm going to leave enough to weave in properly. So, I don't know, I left three, four, five inches there, that's fine. I'm going to hold this securely with my left fingers and thumb, and I'm going to go ahead and just carry on as if to knit. Now I'm going to, again, I want to slide that up and kind of hang on to it a little bit, but you can cinch it up too once you've begun. I'm going to hang on to this tail behind here and I'm just going to start knitting with my new color being careful not to split the stitch. So after I've knitted two or three I will go back and double check that that's kind of cinched up on there and it looks fine. So there you just want to make sure that everything's all secure. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and knit that one round with my new color, as the instructions say, and then we'll do the part where you join into the round. All right, I've completed my one row of knitting. Now I'm to the part in the instructions where it says join into the round. So round one, it, it says place a marker on the needle to, be, to mark the beginning of the round. I don't think I've ever actually done that. I know that this is the beginning because I have all these tail ends here where I'm starting. Um, you can put a marker on if you like. If if you have one that you enjoy, it makes you happy, then do that. Um, so when we join into the round, there's several ways to go about that. Because I know that this is all going to be felted and mashed together, and, and it's not particularly um, a detailed viewing of the stitches after that happens, I'm, I'm not too fancy about that. There's several ways where people will take and swap positions with the stitches, like and put this stitch over here and this one over there and cross them over. I don't do any of that. Honestly, I just carry on knitting and then I just make sure and kind of snug everything up and it'll work out just fine. So to join into the round, I am simply going to keep knitting and I'm going to go in as if to knit. I'm going to, you know, pinch all of this and make sure it stays tight like it was before. And I'm going to go in and wrap relatively tightly, maybe a little tighter than I would normally would. And I'm going to snug that up and I'm going to do the same there. And I'm going to make sure that second stitch is pretty well snugged up also. And then I'm just going to keep going. Um, and then so it says you're going to knit a complete round. Then there's also a fit note that says, you know, if you have an extra wide foot, you're going to knit another round after that. So if that's what you need to do, um, carry on. So I'm going to knit this all the way around one time. And then we'll go on to the toe and the instep shaping. Um, you know, you can Google or YouTube search other methods of joining into the round. That's really the simplest thing to do is just keep knitting and make sure everything's snugged up for this purpose. Now, if I was joining into the round to make a sock, for example, I 
would not do it that simply. I would do something a little more secure. And when we do a sock knit along, I'll show you. Um, but for this felted project where I know that everything's, all the fibers will be mashed and felted and matted together, I'm not worried about it. All right, I've gotten back to the beginning. You can see where I've joined in the round. That's a little bit loose here, but I'm going to go ahead and snug it up again. Um, for round one of the toe and instep shaping, the pattern asks me to just simply knit a certain number of stitches, which is going to take me back to the... Uh, the top or the toe. This join here will actually end up being the back of your heel. So I'm going to knit another halfway around. Um, in my case, it's the larger size. See, I'm just snugging that up there. And so I'm going to knit 45, I believe. All right, I've knitted, uh, for my size, I've knitted 45 stitches. Next, the pattern says make one, knit one. Now, here, we don't have the purl bump down below because this is the right side or the knitted, knitted side and then that's the purl, the wrong side of the garment or slipper. So I don't have a purl bump to pick up. So I can do my make one here a couple of different ways. I can simply go under here and pick up that horizontal bar and knit into that as and make a stitch there. And again, that's gonna make a little hole. It will probably all felt back together just fine. Um, I'm just a little, OCD and don't care for that method, but you can certainly do that. Um, what I prefer to do is I don't have a pearl bump, but I can just go and pick up this part of the stitch down below, kind of pull that out to the left, and I'm going to knit into the back of it so that I don't twist it. If I knit into the front, then I twist it, which it's not a big deal if you do that. It's going to be all felted together. But this is actually a correct method of creating a left-leaning increase. And you will do this in other uh, shawl patterns, sock patterns, various other garments. So it's a good, good practice to learn how to do it properly from the get-go. So when I want to increase, I have the stitch I've just knitted. You can see that. And then I have this, the row right below it. That's that stitch's mother, if you will. I'm going to go all the way down one more row to my current stitch's grandmother. And I'm going to pick up Granny's leg here. Sounds funny, but it's a good way to remember it. Knit into the back loop, back part. Okay, so it slips it off. Whoops, I didn't wrap that correctly. Knit into the back. There you go. And that makes it lay flat. And if that was truly an in increase, it lays flat as opposed to being twisted. So that's my make one. Let me show you that one more time. I have knitted my 45 stitches. I'm not gonna pick up the, the parent stitch because I need to go down one more to get, it, to get a free leg, if you will. Knit into the back loop there, wrapping counterclockwise. I just realized my hands might have been out of the frame. Let me do that again. I'm gonna go pick this up down below, knit into the back portion of that loop, back half, and pull it through and off. So that's a make one. Then I'm going, that's my center. I'm going to knit the next one. The, this is the center toe stitch here, so I'm right in the middle of my work. Then it wants me, the pattern asks me to make one, knit one again. So we're going to look here. Here's the stitch that I currently have, the loop on my needle. The next row down is where my fingernail is. That is the mother, and the grandmother is the row below. So we want to pick up Granny's leg and knit into the back of that. Okay, oh, I almost lost that, okay? So that's my make one, knit one. Now the pattern says turn, which simply means turning your work over, all right? <clears throat> now, your yarn's coming off the wrong side, it's on the left. But if you'll notice the next row, row two says slip one. So I'm simply gonna slip that stitch from the left to the right needle, going in as if to purl so that you don't twist it and just slip it right off of there, okay? Now, purl four, okay? Going into purl, wrapping counterclockwise and purling. Two, three, four. Okay, easy. Now, turn, turn my work. So I'm gonna turn it back over. Okay, we've just finished row two and we've turned our work and now it feels a little awkward. It looks a little strange because the yarn is coming off the stitch that's on the left needle. 
So what we want to do is follow the instructions. It says slip one. So we're going to go in and slip this as if to purl. Go in as if to purl and just slip it off. Okay, so now the working yarn is coming from the right side, so that's better. Then it says knit three. One, two, three. And then we come to the abbreviation SSK, which is slip, slip, knit. We'll also notice that we have a gap right here. That is where we turned our work at the end of row two. So the slip, slip, knit is going to allow us to decrease by knitting these two, two stitches together and close that gap. So we're going to slip. Now this time we're going to slip as if to knit. So go in as if you're going to knit and just simply slip that off. Now that does intentionally twist that stitch. Then we're going to go in as if to knit again and slip that one off. Okay, that's the slip slip. Now we're going to put the left needle in like this and bring it up to the top. Now it looks like we're going to knit regularly wrap around counterclockwise and knit those off. Okay, we'll sh I'll show you that again in just a moment. We're gonna knit the next one, turn our work. So turn it, simply turn it over. Okay, row four, slip one, go in as if to purl and slip it off. And we're gonna purl four. Okay, one, two, three, four. And again, we come to that same kind of gap thing. That's where we turned our work last time. We're going to purl these two together, so you're just going to slip in underneath both of those, both of them together as if to purl, and then go ahead and do that. Wrap counterclockwise and purl them off together. And then just purl the next one. Okay, turn your work. Now we're at the beginning of row five. Slip the first one off as if to purl. Knit five. One, two, three four, five, and again, the slip, slip, knit. So slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, go in with your left needle, but you wanna switch it around to the top so it feels like a regular knit stitch, wrap your counterclockwise and knit them off. Okay, good. Now just knit the next one. Okay, that was row five. I'll show you this one more time. Row six is the same as before. Slip one off as if to purl. Purl the next ones. Okay, we're gonna purl six. There's three, four, five, six. And purl two together to close the gap. So go in as if to purl. Purl those two stitches together and off. And then purl the next one. Okay, turn your work. This is row seven. Okay, slip one, knit seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I realize you might not be as fast of a knitter and that's fine, you can just rewind or slow down. But again, we have the SSK, which is slip, slip, knit, slip one as if to knit, take it off, go in as if to knit, take it off. Now you're gonna go in with your left needle Put your left needle on the top, wrap counterclockwise, and knit those together off. The reason that they have you slip those individually is so that they lay flat. You are twisting them, but then when you knit them together, you go back half a turn in the twist and it makes it lay flat and it makes it not a twisted increase, or sorry, decrease. You're gonna knit that last one. Okay, you're ready to begin row eight. All right, so you're going to carry on with your pattern, being really careful to watch the size indicators in parentheses in the coming rows. Um, and then we will resume with tutorial part three when it's time to knit the cuff and change colors again. Okay, uh, as always, let me know if you have questions in the Facebook group or leave a comment below this video.